Hello, everybody. My name is Noel, and this is The Unhinged Show. This is our first episode, and I want to thank you guys for tuning in and for supporting us. Please, this is going to be on Apple um, Podcasts. It's also going to be on Spotify. We're also going to be sharing this on the network, so check it out, Club Ambition Network. Um, we're also going to have this on Twitter. Sorry. Well, I call it Twitter. I don't call it X. Um, so today, we are having our podcast regarding our first episode, which is religion and astrology. It is for our greater season, which is what is modern society. I wanted to bring in someone when it came to the astrology component of this conversation that I believe has a lot of knowledge and information on the subject matter to give you guys a different perspective. I didn't just want to talk about religion or talk about astrology without just giving my own biases and information. And I think I found someone that is going to do a phenomenal job at giving us that perspective of, you know, what is astrology, the role astrology can play in our society, does play in our society, and what our society can look like moving forward with astrology. Um, I want to introduce Jessica Lenyato, who is a host on her own podcast called Ghost of a Podcast. Please check that out. She is an astrologer and psychic medium from Oakland, California. Um, there is a round of applause there, Chowder. If you could press that for me, it should be. There we go. Perfect. Thank you. All right. That's fantastic. You do got to press it again, though. Yeah. Sorry about that. Um, so, Jessica, if you could just introduce yourself to everyone and just give us a brief description of who you are, what you do, and anything else you want to talk about. Sure. sure. I, and thanks, thanks so much for having me. I'm so excited, excited to be here for the inaugural episode. episode. Um, I am Jessica Lignato. I am a professional astrologer, uh, psychic medium. I do animal communication uh, and other, other kind of woo-woo new age things. And I have been in private practice since 1994. Uh, so I've been at it for a long time, several decades. Um, and I, I really just love the work I do. And I, I mean, I don't want to, you know, talk too much about myself on the, uh, we're straight out the gate, but I will say that in regards to astrology, the way that I use it is as a tool, as opposed to a belief system. And I know some people regard astrology as a belief system. I personally do not. Um, and I think that there's a lot of passion and interest around astrology in the world at this time. And there's a lot of misunderstandings and misconceptions even amongst astrology fans. So I am excited for this conversation to see where it goes. <laughs> so am I, because what you just said was very interesting. I already want to start asking questions. Um, I do thank you for being our first guest, and I'm very honored for you giving us this opportunity to speak to you and get your insight. 30 years doing something, is um, it, it, it gives you the ability to speak on something. It means you are reputable. It means this is your life passion and your choice. And nothing I love more than talking to people who are experienced in something, you know, going to school. That was what I was taught when I was in university was that, you know, specialization is a real thing. And people mm -hmm. who devote their life to something and learning about it, you can learn a lot from them. So thank you again for just having, you know, willing to be here and to talk to us. Um, so just to jump in right away, <sighs> it's a loaded question. Can you explain to us what is astrology? How sure. it works and the role you play in the practice. Mm -hmm. so, so astrology, astrology can, can be used in a lot of different ways. ways. And, and there, there are a lot of different kinds, kinds of astrology. I'm, I'm a Western, Western astrologer. That's, That's an important thing for me to say. say. But to, to keep it as succinct and to the point as possible, possible astrology is studying the universe, right? right? Studying the planets in the universe. The universe. In the universe studying time, time and using layers upon layers of that data to understand individual people, uh, ancestral family lines, um, situations, history, the future. We can kind of use it to, to look forward and to look backwards. Um, so, so I'm, I'm not, not sure, sure if that's, that's the as as, as good, good and solid of a of a description as you were looking for, but I but I can say that astrology is, is requires a great deal of math to be able to get to the data where you start to do the fun interpreting things. things. And a lot of times when people hear about astrology, they think horoscopes, or they think like I'm a Taurus, that means X Y Z, and that's just like 
the, like, like the cotton, cotton candy. candy. It's, it's like, like um, the, the salad before the meal. meal. It's, it's not, not the, the, the main thrust, thrust of what astrology is. is. Astrology is, is uh, multi-layered. Uh, um, so, so I'm not sure if that's like a good, good starting point of a, of a <laughs> description. <laughs> But, but let, let, me let me know if you have questions. questions. Yeah, no, I definitely have questions. <laughs> but <laughs> I think that was fantastic because it definitely like opened the door to the conversation. I'm so glad you brought up the horoscope concept um, because it does leave a lot of people confused. You know, how did you come to these conclusions? How did you make these assessments? And essentially what you're saying is there is a process behind that. Um, oh, yeah. And I'm glad you did distinguish yourself as a Western astrologer because from the research that I was able to do, I noticed I kind of followed the genealogy of, you know, astrology itself, you know, it, starting in Greece. Um I mean, not starting Greece, I'm sorry. Starting, um, I believe it was um, um, in the Babylonian Empire, something like that. And then it moved to Greece and then it went to China. China added in the animals. Um, the Greeks were able to include the personality. So I know that there is different variations of this. It's not just what we have today. It started as something fundamentally different. Um, so my question to you is, with the astrology that you practice specifically, um, how do you get to the horoscope component? Like, sure. sure. the process to that? Mm -hmm. so, so, okay. okay. There's, there's, there's like, like a couple different ways that, that, that casting a horoscope is done. Is done. One is, we're talking, we're talking about, like, your sun sign horoscopes. You know, you go to a website, you go to a newspaper, you read your horoscope. Basically, what I, as an astrologer, am doing to do that. And I'm, I'm going to give you a little visual, visual if, if I may. I know some people are just listening, but I feel like it, it can't hurt, right? right? So this, so this is a book that every astrologer has, and this is what I'm looking at. at. See, See that? that? It's all math. math. It's, it's, it's symbols, symbols and numbers. And, numbers. and, and the reason why I'm sharing, sharing this with you is in order to be able to cast a horoscope, one must be able to look in an ephemeris to track what planets are at what degrees of what zodiac sign on a given day. And then one must be able to do the basic geometry to look at something called aspects, which is basically the mathematical relationship between the planets in the sky. Um, and what that tells us about... What's, what's happening, happening. you know, know it was something that happened, happened with you and I was we were supposed to record the other day and there was like a technical difficulty so we rescheduled and what I had said to you was I'm not surprised Mercury's retrograde um, and that's like a, a, a horoscope thing it's tracking the movement of a planet and understanding that Mercury is which governs technology and communications is currently appearing to move backwards through the zodiacal degrees that's called Mercury retrograde and when that happens I expect technical difficulties I expect things to be you know rescheduled late, late that, that kind of stuff, stuff. so, so anyways, anyways so i look, look at all those things and then i will look, look at each individual sun sign and, and based on that interpret, interpret right? right interpret what, what it means and what it's likely to mean for each sign now, now another, another thing in terms of horoscopes i do on my weekly podcast on sunday episodes is i talk about the horoscope of the week ahead and i don't do it for sun signs i do it for the world and so that, that allows, allows me to look at something like the astrology that's forthcoming on August 19th, which is the first day of the DNC, and to see how unpredictable and wild it looks. And that starts to give me a sense of not just what will be happening for me in my life or, you know, for you in your life, but what will be happening in the world. So it's tracking, again, the math of how the planets are relating to each other through the zodiac. Um, and interpreting, interpreting what that's going to mean. mean. And, and, and I'll say one last thing, thing which is in, in the second form of horoscoping that I'm referring to, not the sun sign stuff, but the kind of like bigger predictions, predictions. what's happening is I'm not just interpreting based on, you know, my sense of, the, of what might happen. I'm doing it based on understanding history because astrology is a great tool for understanding history. So these things happen in cycles. And as the cycles repeat, I can look back at the last times that these cycles were active and what happened historically. And so this is where... Um, you, you can, can, you know, some, some astrologers get really in the weeds and are very much like scholars as opposed to people who would have a podcast or like do interpretations, interpretations if that makes sense. sense. There's, There's a, a lot of astrologers who are scholars. I fully understand and, and, what you're saying. Yeah. Um, now, this is my follow-up question because I understand you, it, I understand the mathematical component and, you know, measuring the stars, the planets to be able to get to this conclusion. My question is, and I think you might have answered it for me, what is determining what are the um, attributes 
for the stars and the planets. <laughs> um, is it that thing that you mentioned where it's like there is a continuity in place where something continues to happen, therefore we've made the assumption that when, when the moon is in this position, because of that, then these certain things are going to happen. So we've established that the moon does this. Yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> or is it like, because when I was doing my research, they're telling me the Greeks are the one who gave characteristics to the planets and the stars. And then it was the Chinese who started to put the animal signs onto it. So it's like, is this longstanding stuff that's already been established? Or is this mm-hmm. stuff that you guys were able to discover by using continuity and the mathematics that you have? So, so it's, it's interesting that, that, that you're referencing the Greek and, and, and the Chinese kind of zodiac. zodiac. So, so there's, there's a lot of mythology about the gods, right? right? And, and those are related to the planets, planets and that comes from, from um, Greece. There's, there's also a whole other form of astrology used in India, India which is a whole, a whole other topic, and I'm not uh, an expert on it at all. Um, and, and, you know, but, but, but here's the thing. For as long as people have been looking up at the sky, they, they have and, and experiencing, experiencing weather. weather because, because essentially astrology tracks seasons it tracks, it tracks the, the, the natural world around us and our interconnection to it and, and so people have always used astrology and astrology can be traced actually in most all cultures um and in different ways like it's not always called astrology i mean in the christian bible or i don't know if it's in just the bible whatever but in the bible there's the three wise men uh, they, they were, were not, not looking up at the, the stars, stars. They, they were astrologers, astrologers obviously, obviously, right? So, so in, in all cultures, astrologers have been, been present, and historically, for most of time, astrologers, astrologers were scholars, and they, and they were employed by kings, kings and queens, queens right? Well, I know. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, this is, this is how it is, and it was only in the early 1900s when some smart person was like, huh, I think we can make money off of this. Let's put horoscopes in the backs of women's magazines and sell them products. And so this is where, and it started off with moon signs, I believe, as opposed to sun signs. But there's like a very literal reason why sun sign astrology, like, you know, if you say like, oh, I'm, I'm a Gemini, you're saying my, the sun was in Gemini when I was born. And the reason why that is so popular for horoscopes and I'll, I'll come back to your question because I realize I'm not answering, answering it. No, no, but no, the reason why that's... Keep going. This is because I have okay. a follow-up to this. this is okay, okay, good, 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 good. Um, the, the reason why we use the sun, sun partially because, you know, the sun is related to the identity and the will, but, but mainly because the sun moves one degree a day. It never goes retrograde. It's consistent. So it works for the books. It works for magazines. It works for websites. It's consistent. You don't have to know anything about yourself except for the day you were born to know your sun sign. And that... That sells, you know what I mean? Like, like let's let's not imagine that astrology and capitalism don't have their own unique relationship. And a good part of the reason why astrology is as accessible as it is today is because websites were looking for clickbait. So people would come back every day, every week, every month to the same page. And so they, we started getting opportunities, astrologers, to have jobs. And then as that started to shift... People started, started to become more interested in astrology. In astrology. And, and as, as it became more accessible and more experts, experts had jobs and had audiences, everything starts, starts to build. People, people become more interested. They have more access to data. And, and, and you, you see what's, what's happened, happened now, now, right? People really resonate with astrology. And, um, and, and there's a lot of things to critique about that, that even for me as an astrologer. But there's a lot of also really good about it, too. So... I forget, I forget your original question, question but you, you hit, hit me with what you got next. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'll go back to that question. Yeah, yeah. You, you introduced something very important here. Um, so this conversation about, you know, in, in Christianity, I would call them Sunday Sunday Christians. Um, you're essentially calling them, you know, people who just interact with astrology in a very surface level component because of the profitability that capitalism has created around it. Um, and I know that my interaction with astrology has only been with that component. And it's because it's so popular and it's what's so main, it's so spread out. And to connect it back to my original question, you know, as an astrologer, how do you explain to someone that the horoscope culture that we've created of pushing these generalized understandings of what's going to happen next for somebody is not, in fact, the totality of astrology and astrology Mm -hmm. does, in fact, have a longstanding history of, you know, culture and just information and we're not just making this up off the fly like it seems like it is yeah, yeah. for that you know, i mean stuff. It's, it's it's kind of like how do you convince somebody who's never had access to a great chef 
or uh, uh, like, you know, a high quality restaurant, restaurant that McDonald's isn't the only thing that's food, food right? right? Like, like to, to a certain extent, extent there's, there's some people who are going to be like, yeah, no, there's other kinds of food out there. I like McDonald's. Leave me alone. Leave me alone. All I want is McDonald's. And then there's other people who are just going to be like, I like McDonald's and other things. And then, and then there's some, some people who just won't mess, mess with it at all, right? right? And, and it's, it's similar with astrology. astrology. It's, it's anyone who's truly interested in 2024 can, can find, find out more. more. You, know, you know, there's, you know, my, my podcast, podcast is, is like, like up, up on the charts, charts right? right? Like, like and, and I'm not the only one. one. The, the, the thing, thing is, is that, that and this is really important, especially because, you know, as a religious person, you may you may identify with this in a different kind of way, but... The, the thing, thing about astrology is even, even people who are huge fans of astrology, astrology a, lot a lot of times they don't take it terribly seriously. seriously. There, there has been, I think, meaningful smear campaigns, campaigns right, from, from religion, religion, from, from like in religious institutions. institutions. To be like, like that's, that's silly. That's silly. And, and, and in our modern world, world that's girl stuff. stuff. We, we don't, don't take, take that, that stuff seriously. seriously. That's, That's the, the way, way people talk. talk. It's, it's not that deep. deep. And, and so what happens is even people who live their lives by astrology, who are constantly talking about it, who are constantly reading about it or listening to it, they also do it with a like, yeah, but I don't really take it that seriously. Or yeah, it's not really that deep. And to me, that is so complicated and problematic on a lot of levels. You know, one is if you're a spiritual person, whether, whether it's astrology or Christianity, Christianity whatever, whatever it is, show, show it respect. Show, show it the respect it deserves. If you're going to live your life by something, something then, then live your life by it. You, you know, know what I mean? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. I get right into the theme of what this episode is all about. I love this. Excellent. I'm so glad to hear that. I'm so glad to hear that. And I think like, as a religious person, you know that there are some people who are just like, yeah, I'm a Christian, whatever. And you're just like, mm, and are you? But are you? But what does that mean? And the truth is, there are layers. And there's different layers of devotion. There's different layers of intellectual kind of commitment. There's different layers of education. And, and there's different ways of living. And so to kind of get to your question, you know, on the one hand, I don't need to tell everyone. That, that there's, there's real, real astrology versus fake astrology versus, versus like, you know, you know cotton, cotton candy is not the same as five-star five meal. Like, I don't need to tell that to everyone because to a certain extent, extent most people, a lot of people don't care. A lot of people don't want to know. And on the other hand, that is a big part of what I do with my work is I put out what I hope is quality content that doesn't just do horoscopes, right? So on my podcast, I also do, um, in my midweek episodes, I give readings to people. And in those readings, people are not just hearing how I consult as an astrologer, how an astrology reading goes. They're also getting training from me. They're, They're getting, getting modeled expertise, modeled boundaries, modeled technique, um, on how to be an astrologer. So it is a complement to their studies if they are studying to be an astrologer. And for somebody who's like, oh, astrology is just sun signs. You know what? The truth of the matter is most people have really strong opinions about astrology. Well, you, there's very few people you'll ask about astrology and they'll have nothing to say, but very few people have done any research. Very, Very few people have any education. education. And, and whenever, whenever anyone has a strong opinion about something without, without any education or information, that's, that's a reflection on you instead of the, the topic at hand, hand right? It's, it's like, like the older you get, hopefully the more you learn, you learn how little you know about things, things and, and how that is actually relevant. relevant. That is, so, so, yeah, yeah. That, was that was a long answer to your question. question but. That was amazing. And I thank you because um, it's, it definitely leads into my second question um, because this conversation of spiritualism and, you know, I agree with you, you know, you should be devoted to your spiritualism. That is what episode one was all about, was that if astrology is claiming itself to be a form of spiritualism, then what's going on right now is not spiritualism because it's very surface level. Um, a lot of people who claim, quote unquote practice astrology or, you know, are participating in it don't understand it. They can't explain it to me or they can't explain mm -hmm. it to anyone. And mm -hmm. that's fundamentally problematic. The same way me being Christian, if I wasn't able to properly explain the Old Testament and the New, I mean, and the New Testament and just the covenant and the, and the New Covenant, I would be at wrong because it's like, why are you proudly claiming something if you're not actually devoted to your, you know, your spiritualism and you can't, you're not consistently reading it as the spiritualism asks you to do. You're not consistently um, partake, partaking in it. So, can, can, can I, I jump in on something, on something about, about that, that though? though? Yeah. Because... because 
to, to that, that end, end listen, listen, there are a lot of Christians who aren't, who aren't just Sunday, Sunday Christians, Christians or, you know, you know I'm, I'm Jewish, Jewish and, and there's, we, we call them high holy day Jews, Jews who just, just go, go to synagogue twice a year for the high holy days, right? Like there are people who are not in it for the theology and they're not in it for the religion. They're in it for the culture. They're in it for the structure. They're in it for the community. They're in it for a casual connection. And it, it is easy for somebody, somebody like me who's devoted my whole life to astrology or somebody like you who's deeply um, committed to your Christian faith to be like, like well, well, that's not relevant or that's not as good. But the truth of the matter is there's, there's room, room for us all to be different. different. There, there has to be room, room for us all, all to be different. different. And, and so, so for, for the, the for the like the girlies who are just like cannot explain why they like astrology or how it works or what it is or the Christians who are just like Jesus, you know, or whatever, like you, you know. We can, we can have, have a conversation, conversation around that. that. And, and also, whatever, whatever it is that helps us to make sense of the human condition, condition of why, why we're here, here of, why of why we struggle, as, as long as it doesn't empower a person to do harm to another, I say, let go and let God. You know what I mean? Do what is right. And I think that that attitude is more consistently shared with, with people who have like, like that, that kind of like dip in and, and dip out with religion than people who have that relationship with astrology or other kinds of new age spirituality. spirituality. And, and again, I think that's a product of patriarchy. patriarchy. I think it's a product of kind of how we so often will say that that's like girl stuff and girl stuff isn't serious stuff. Yeah. So yeah, yeah just, just to throw, throw that in the mix of, of, the, of the conversation. conversation. Yeah. Yeah. Cause girl stuff is like, it's not um, prestigious. It's not legitimate. Right. Religion, religion, is men. Men. religion is run by men. Religion is run by men. It's, it's written by men. It's it's enforced, enforced by men. Uh, there are, you know, women have to fight to be in front of a congregation. And when it comes to spirituality with related to astrology, it's run by women. It's for women. It's by women. It's for men. It's for all genders. But it's like religion is made for men. You know what I mean? It's like men are rule the life of women. And it's not surprising that women are just like, eh. <laughs> that doesn't seem like the God I, I love. That doesn't seem like the God I want. And so people turn outside of conventional religion, because I'm sure you've noticed that people in your age group, they're the dwindling numbers with religion. We're going to get to that. Okay, okay, okay. I'll let you leave. I'll let you leave. I'll let you Let me guide So let me just, before my second question, um, I do want to say, I totally understand where you're coming from. And I agree with you. I don't believe that we should be passing judgment on people simply because they're not fully committed to faith or spirit, if that's in astrology or religion. I think it becomes a problem when it goes back to what you said. You boldly claim something you don't know. And yeah. you boldly live by it and you don't know it. Because that's when it becomes, you know, systematically dangerous. Um, when you boldly live by something you don't understand. And I've seen that happen on the left and the right politically. Um, one of my majors is political science, and I can fully see where someone, you know, indoctrinating themselves into an ideology without fully understanding it and promoting it, or even just indoctrinating yourself into it and not fully understanding it can lead to some drastic situations in your personal life and in your community. We're seeing that now <laughs> with the presidential mm -hmm. election. A little bit. Yeah. <laughs> uh, so the second question I have is, uh, do you view astrology as a science or a form of spiritualism? Mm. So, so, Okay. okay. I do, I do not, not regard it as a science. science. I, also I also do not regard psychology as a science. Wow. Okay. okay. I, do I do not, not regard either, either as a science. science. They're, They're both interpretive. interpretive. They're both reflective of um, the, the practitioner. practitioner. And, and they, they have evolved, evolved greatly based on cultural norms. norms. The, the days, days of Freud, Freud have passed. And, and that doesn't, doesn't mean there aren't Freudian psychologists, right? right? And, and I think it's the same with astrology. Astrology has more math and structure to it. Than than psychology, psychology does. does. I'm, I'm, I don't consider, consider either of them sciences, sciences myself. myself. Now, now there, there is actually, um, a spiritualist, a spiritualist church. church. So, so when you use the word spiritualism, spiritualism I keep on getting thrown, thrown off because there is a church of called spiritualist, a spiritualist church, and spiritualists. They're a church of mediums of people who speak with the dead, and spiritualism started, I think, in the early 1900s as well, and. Um, they had, had uh, they, they were, were like abolitionists, abolitionists and they were one of not just uh, a church, church of mediums, but they, but they were one, one of the first places that women could work. Um, it was, it was primarily religion, white women, but women, women could work. work. And, and so, uh, like, so that's, so that's throwing, throwing me off. off. But, but I, I, I see, see, listen, listen 
I have friends who are astrologers, who are professional astrologers, great astrologers, who are devout Christians, devout Muslims, devout Jews, who are pretty much atheists, who are super woo-woo, people who are more like me, who are very spiritual but are affiliated with a religion. I do not see astrology as a belief system. I see it as a tool. And, and it's, it's a tool, tool that can be used in many different ways, ways in different, different hands. hands. And, and, and that is really how I see it. it. And, and I know that, that you know, know other, most, most people in the mainstream regard astrology as a belief, belief system. system. I, don't I don't believe in astrology. And, and I've dedicated the last 30 years of my life to it. it. But I don't believe in it. I don't believe in ibuprofen. But you know what? I take, I take it when I have a headache, and most, and most of the time it works. It works. I have taken ibuprofen when I have, when I have a headache, and it hasn't worked. worked. That, that has happened for me. And, and it, doesn't it doesn't make me stop believing in ibuprofen. It doesn't make me stop taking it. You know, if, if every time I took it, it didn't work, work I'd stop taking it. it. But, but until that happens, happens most of the time it works, so I take it when I have a headache. And astrology works for me. In my hands, the way I use it, astrology really is a reliable tool. And does it work 100% of the time? Hell no. It does, it does not, not. but it, it works the vast majority of the time. And, and I, don't I don't expect anything to work 100% of the time, including my car. Doesn't, doesn't mean I throw it away when it stops working. working. You know, know what I mean? I just, I work, I work on, on it. So, so yeah, that's. Oh, I'm sorry. Um, no, 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 no. You go, you go. Um, so I do appreciate that answer. Um, kind of want to give some background as to why I asked the question in my research. You know, I was able to find out that there have been instances where, we saw astrology being incorporated into spiritualism, but also, you know, cases of it being seen in science and it being proven scientifically. Um, and I just want to go through that for a little bit. Um, and when I say the word spiritualism, I do want to make it clear that. Um, so I'll tell you a little background by myself. Um, I graduated from the University of Rhode Island. I have three bachelor degrees, economics, philosophy, political science. So a lot of my terminology is rooted in that philosophy. And mm -hmm. when I say spirit, I'm referring back to um, er um, Socrates and Plato. And their whole definition of like what is you're going means. you're going way back you're not going to yeah. 1900 you're no, going no, you're going no, way back you're not talking not about the spiritualist term yeah. Yeah, okay that, okay body theory was cute but god you yeah. know god bless um okay I'm not, all right all right I, yeah i don't really go by their definition of spirit and body i think plato and socrates had a more theological version of it and in the, in the sense of like there is a spirit and the spirit exists in the body and mm -hmm. um you know there's a material existence and then there's a spiritual existence and you know we're just in the middle of that as spirit and being in one. So whenever I say spiritualism, it is anything that is relating to that conversation of that which is disconnected from the material. <laughs> um, and attempts to like connect with that spirit. So just so you understand where I'm coming from, I'm sorry. Right, right. Um, so when it comes to the component of it being a spirit, it being incorporated into spiritualism, I want to get into some of the things that you've already brought up. Um, I saw that in the 1940s, there was a synagogue that was unearthed. And in the synagogue, they found that there was, um, you know, the astrological animals on the floor. And mm -hmm. it shocked people because at the time, they um, they had been assuming that, you know, the Jews just didn't believe in astrology because it was a form of paganism. And come to find out there was a subgroup of, you know, Jewish people who possibly did in fact um, believe in astrology and we see that again with the star of Bethlehem which you had brought up the argument was and continues to be that um, those three wise men were possibly astrologers who were following the star that was given to them by God and um, when I was doing my research on this this is kind of crazy for the people at home there was a guy in the 17th century named Kepler who discovered that if you did the astrological chart for, um, I think it was the last time, the, oh, this is what happened. Okay, this was a story. So they were trying to figure out what was it that they saw in the sky because there was no other accountings at the time as to what it was. And Kepler ended up figuring out that um, Jupiter and Saturn were both in Pisces. And when that happens, there's like this dazzling moment in the sky. And apparently... When you do the birth chart for that period of time when that happened, um, I think it said us uh, around 7 BC, it was a perfect birth chart. It was insane how like every single planet was in its own sign. And in the re research I was doing, it said if someone was born with this birth chart, 
it means they were going to do something phenomenal for the world. Ironically enough, that is indicating Jesus Christ. <laughs> um, so, you know, with that information on the spirit side, do you believe that, you know, is there a case that astrology does in fact incorporate spiritualism? Or is it like you said, is it a tool? Because there were people when I was doing my research that was saying it is a tool. It's a tool from God. When God created the when God created the universe, he also created the stars and the planet. And astrology should be used as a tool to further understand his word and his will. So that's, from, that's closer to my belief is, is that, that the idea, idea of, uh, you know, and, and, and I don't, I hope this doesn't offend in any way, but I believe it was actions, actions of hubris, hubris, not by God, but, but by men, men in, in the church, church who, who wanted to have, have total control over our access to divinity and to spirit. And, to spirit. and, and that, that is when so many pagan principles, principles astrology, astrology, so many other principles were completely separated from uh, people, people of faith. faith. And, and the, the truth, truth of the matter is, how? How, how can anyone justify that, that the natural world is separate from us? From us? We, we are, are I am not, not of the mind. mind. That, that we were placed in, in these bodies, bodies on this earth to, to dominate it and, and turn it into, into a parking lot. lot. I am of the mind that we are in interplay with the natural world. world. And, and part, part of the natural world, world are the planets. planets. Part, part of the natural world, world is the sun and the wind and the, wind and the seasons. seasons. And time is one of these unbreakable laws of the human condition. condition. And so... You know, you know, do, do I, I believe in, in, I don't believe in God in the way that you talk, talk about. I don't believe God, God is a man. man. Um, well, and I, I'm sorry if I use it. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah, you, you used heat. That's the only reason why. why. Yeah. I'm used to using Christ as heat because I believe Christ is heat, but God is a spirit. God can't be just yeah. Yeah. It's a spirit. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean Adam, Adam and Eve were, you know, one, one each. each. Okay. okay. But, but anyways, so, so the, the, for me, the, the, my belief is that this astrology is just a tool and it can be used by anyone of any faith. In a, in a way, way that is in respect of their faith, that is informed by their faith. By their faith. But, but it is simply a tool that is available to us. To us. And, and I don't understand people, people thinking it is of the devil or it is of a cult comes from a really uneducated place. place. I've, I've never heard anyone who studied astrology who said that. that. And, and in fact, there's, there's an astrologer out there. there. Um, his name is Samuel, Ran Samuel, Reynolds, Samuel Reynolds. And he... Um, was, was a pastor, pastor child, child pastor, pastor, I believe, and he studied astrology to disprove it, and he became an astrologer. He's, he's great. great. You should look, look him up. He's really, really interesting, and I believe he studied theology, so he'd probably be a great person for you to talk to if you are doing that. Yeah. yeah, Samuel F. Reynolds. It's Reynolds, R-E-Y-N-O-L-D-S. I think his website's unlockastrology.com. Yeah. Yeah. You should, you should definitely, definitely check, check him out. He's really, really just so, so smart, and, and, and also he's really educated, educated about theology. He studied a lot of religions, um, and yeah, yeah he's, he's, he's a really fascinating guy, guy and, and, and a really, really reputable, reputable astrologer, astrologer so. so, yeah. yeah. Okay, and, and I'm glad you're giving us this perspective. Um, so that's the spirit side of that question. Um, on the science side, mm -hmm. I think this goes to your whole mathematical concept of using the using science as a tool to further use astrology as a tool to better understand our existence. Um, when I was doing my research, um, I found that there were two conflicting arguments here. There mm -hmm. was a case study done in Indiana, and I'm assuming you know this case study, the Indiana University no. study that was done in the 90s. Um, it was done, it included 23 astrologers, and the purpose of it was to give these well-known, well-renowned astrologers um, it was four of them, 23 um, profiles. And oh, so four astrologers, 23, 23 people. Yeah, yeah, sorry about uh, okay. that. Oh, wait, no, it was six. I'm so sorry. So let me let me restart. I'm sorry. Okay. My brain, because this was I wrote this terribly. Um, so at the University of Indiana, there was a case study that was done back in the 90s, and it brought in six professional astrologers. 23 of them, I mean, uh, they were given 23 astrology profiles, names and faces. Their jobs was to identify the person with the face, and the profile. Mm. They didn't get a single one right. Mm. However, and that that's was, not how it's sorry. sorry. Yeah, no, I know. So I, I'm gonna let you I'm gonna let you get yeah, I got Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm, I'm listening, listening. I'm listening, I'm listening. This goes into the math thing. Um so then before that though, in the fifties, there was a guy named Michael um I'm gonna butcher that last name. Um it, it, well it's 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 French. Michel Gaquin. God bless. 
Um, <laughs> I watched a documentary about him. I, I, I should have like wrote the, the pronunciation down. I'm sorry. I'm really bad with grammar. Um, he discovered the Mars and Jupiter effect. Mm -hmm. So he was he did a statistical correlation. He brought in a bunch of different um, examples of successful because, as you know, uh, Jupiter is the planet that deals with rulership. So he brought in a bunch of people who were, you know, statesmen, war generals, stuff like that. And he proved that they were born when Jupiter was rising. Mm -hmm. Then with the Mars effect, um, he um, he brought in business executives um, stuff like that to prove because Mars is the planet of war and courage. His hope was to prove that people who require these components, war generals, businessmen, people who need to be courageous and need to have that type of quality trait were born when Mars was rising. He proved that. He also found mm -hmm. a statistical correlation between the presence of Saturn, the planet of reflection and study, as you know, and it being in the birth chart for people who are doctors and scientists. Now, when they tried to replicate his findings, because he did find a legitimate statistical correlation, there were people who were saying those two things that was wrong. It's very difficult to tell when someone was born. Like, it was, it was becoming difficult for mm. the, the group he had found. And the second argument was, you're selectively choosing. So, hearing these two different case studies, and you being an astrologer, what mm -hmm. is your perspective on it even being treated as a science because it sounded like you were just about to say that's not how it works so i wonder if it's for both cases mm -hmm. that's not how it works so, so there's, there's a couple things i'll say, say. The, the first, first thing, thing is it's not, not how it works, works. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> so you know it's, it's like, like the, the idea, idea that you, that you could look at a birth, birth chart and look at a face and match the face to the birth chart that's not how astrology works no astrologer is doing that for a living to what end what would be the point of that that's not how astrology works um so, so and, and this, this is, is like, like a thing, thing right? right? Like, like a lot of times when people are like, I'm going to prove or I'm going to disprove astrology, astrology. You, you go in. in. Okay, okay, listen, if, if I, I try to make my car do what, what my motorcycle, motorcycle does, I'm going to be disappointed with the results. results. My, my car is my car, my motorcycle is my motorcycle. And a lot of times what people do when they turn to astrology is they're looking and they're like, prove that it's, you know, this thing, which is not. So. The, the, to, the to the first study, study which I've never heard of, and I am in, you know, you know community with a lot of astrologers, astrologers and I've never heard of an, any astrologer who was part of that study, study. Um, but, but I'm not surprised because, because I wouldn't participate in that study. study. It's a ridiculous point of inquiry. inquiry. Now, now to, to the, the second, second thing, thing this, this is, is where we get into complexity. complexity. And, and here's how it works. Let's go back to Jesus. Jesus was born on this very special day, right? And his birth chart speaks to a miraculous, miraculous alignment of, of potential. potential. But, but there's, there's no way that Jesus was the only person born, born that day or born, born that hour or born, born that minute. It's, it's a big world. world. There's a lot of people being born all the time. And, and there's, there's only one Jesus. Jesus. And this is because of a number of things. things. One is we, we have a soul. soul. And, and the soul, from, from my perspective, perspective is where the wind hits the sails. Right. You, you think, think about, about I'm, I'm going to stick with cars. cars. I don't know why. Maybe, Maybe it's because you're on a black, black and white background. It's throwing me into car, car mode. But, but uh, uh, you know, she just said that. <laughs> it's giving uh, it's, 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 basically, yeah, yeah, you're giving me racetrack, racetrack vibes. vibes. That's exactly right. That's right. where I'm going with this. So, so, so listen, everyone, you can give 70 different people the exact same car and the exact same, you know, track and say drive. And everyone's going to do it different. Not, Not everyone's going to have the same, same results because, because we don't all use the same tools, the same opportunities, the same struggles, the same potential in the same way. So that's one thing. And, and that is speaking to the spiritual side of astrology, right? right? The, the belief that I hold is that astrology speaks to predestiny, but we have free will within that predestiny, right? And having free will within our nature is where we get to choose we, we get, get to choose. choose. So, that's so that's one part. part. But here's the other part. You, you cannot track something, something as complex as being, being a spiritual person, person being, being a good leader, leader to one aspect in the birth chart. chart. Just, Just like you cannot track it to one quality in a person. To, to let's say be um, a, a good math teacher at high school. school. You, you can't, can't just be good at math. math. You have to be good with kids. 
Maybe, Maybe you're, you're good with kids, kids in 1997. 1997. You're the, the best, best teacher in the school, school. And, you're and you're still teaching in, in 2021. Now, now maybe you're the worst teacher in the school. Because, because just the same qualities, if, if you don't work on them, if you don't adapt, if you don't, adapt, if you if you don't, don't change, change when you're with different kids in a different world, world the same qualities don't, don't always translate, right? right? And, and so, so this is where these studies that so many times I hear about, people do, to prove or usually to disprove astrology, they're, They're overly, overly simplistic, simplistic for something as complex as the human nature. nature. The, the better, better way of studying astrology, if anyone here wants to go ahead and try to disprove or prove astrology, astrology the, the better way to do it is through mundane astrology. And mundane astrology is the astrology of events. events. It's, it's looking at world events. events. We're, We're talking about wars. wars. We're, We're talking about assassinations. assassinations. We're, We're talking about plagues. plagues. Stuff like that is traceable through regions of the world, through time. And... That's, That's really, really interesting, interesting because, because we can, can look, look at history, history and, and see, see if it runs, runs consistent. consistent. That's, That's the kind of better way than looking at leaders' charts. charts. Because, because, listen, I, I don't, don't want to blow your mind here, here but life isn't fair. And, and so somebody, somebody might have a chart that, that would make them perfect to let's see, be a general, right? right? Or, or to be a CEO. And they don't have the opportunity. There's systemic problems. There, there are, are you, you know, issues, issues around their, their, their physical health, health and, then and then that gets, gets in the way. way. And, and I, think I think we have to acknowledge how complex it is to be a human and, and not seek a singular data point as, as a way to determine what a person is. is. Does that make sense? No, it does. Um, and I definitely understand where you're coming from. I also just know what well, they're probably going to say in the comment section, God bless. But <laughs> I, 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 fully, I fully understand it and I fully respect your viewpoint. And it's defi- you are definitely much well-versed in astrology than anyone I've ever spoken to. I will give you that makes sense. what 100% yeah, yes. without a doubt. It is amazing yeah, yeah. because you're actually formulating a, like, a, a legitimate argument for your belief system. And I can see where you're coming from. I'm also in my head just looking at it from a philosophical standpoint of like where – I could find flaws in this, um, the whole self-determination argument and just, you know, and then from a theological standpoint of like, you, no one can stop God's will. So it doesn't matter if these systemic issues exist. Ah, yeah, yeah, we, we would disagree, disagree on that, on that because, because I, don't I don't believe that God's, God's will is to rip us, to strip, strip us of our, our will. will. I believe that God's will, if there is such a thing as a God, God is to, to give us the tools. tools. Okay. And let, let, our, let, let us on a soul level, level determine, determine who we are. You have, you have a choice to choose, to, choose to be open to speak to an astrologer. astrologer. You have a choice to instead, to instead make, make fun of me for, for my beliefs. beliefs. You have a choice to, to just, just have a conversation about astrology and, and not try to interview an expert. expert. You, have you have choices. choices. Nobody's, Nobody's making, making you choose what you choose. What you choose. I, don't I don't think including God. God. I think that you're using the gifts of God and making choices in response to that. Now, you may disagree but, but I, I, I want to say something, something very important, important which, which is, of course, you, course you could poke holes in what I'm saying. saying. Of course, anyone could. could. People who agree with me, people who don't, who don't agree with me. me. But the, the problem when we listen to other people with the, with the intention of poking holes, holes with, with the intention of substantiating our, 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 our you know, confirmation bias, that whole thing, right? That's the problem. Why we don't have more grace in this country. And more, and more love, love for ourselves, ourselves and each other is because we're looking to poke holes in each other's theories. theories. And, and instead of really striving to understand, understand there are a lot of people who do not believe, believe what you believe, who will never, never believe what you believe, what you believe. And, for, and, have, and have happy, thriving lives, lives right? right? And, that's and that's true for me, and that's, and that's true for you. you. And, and I think something that happens, to be honest, with Christians that doesn't seem to happen in my experience with astrologers is there's this... This, this kind of thing, thing of, like, like if you don't, don't agree with me, you're a bad person. person. If, you if you don't, don't agree with me, you, you simply don't know. know. And, and that is, first of all, a great way to get people to turn their backs on you and, and never listen to you. And, and second, second of all, that, that is not the grace of God. God. That, that is not the grace of God. God. And so, you know, you know to, to anyone, anyone who's listening who's just like, like I don't like astrology, astrology to you, I say, fine. You don't, you don't have to like astrology. astrology. It's not, not for you. This is cool. But to assume that you know something about the topic without any research, real research, you know, is it's, it's really, really a shame. And, and the, the truth, truth is, like, I can't really talk, talk to you about astrology in a complex way because you don't have any basis for it. So I have to speak in really general terms to you about this complex topic, topic right? And, and I got to tell you what, what Noel, I want to pull up your birth chart to be like, like let, let me look, look at your chart, chart and you can tell me what. Because that is where the proof really lies. But I'm not, you know, I don't want to cross any boundaries or whatever. But I just have to say, like, this is where... 
it's, it's really, really interesting, interesting right? right? Is, is to have an experience, experience with something. something. But, but I, I think, you know, you know I, I, think I think that, that most people do not, not have a true experience with true astrology, astrology but, but they, they have, have very fixed opinions. opinions. And, and, you know, you know I've already acknowledged, acknowledged what I think of that. that but, but I think um, it, is, it, is, it is worth understanding that astrology, astrology is not one thing and it's, and it's not, not one thing in one person's hands. hands. And I'm repeating, repeating myself, myself now, so I'll shut up. up. But uh, that's, that's that. that. No, I thank you. Um, and I agree with a lot of what you said. Um, I truly do believe that the biggest issue with faith in general, it's not just Christianity, is this, you know, this idea of like superiority. Yeah. And the way you handle, you know, your beliefs and how you handle when you're interacting with other people. And I think you're absolutely right. If we answer every conversation trying to prove someone wrong, then we're never going to, you know, because I, that's I, not a conversation. That, that's not a conversation. And I, I come from the school of thought beyond just my faith um, in philosophy. I believe in Hegel. Hegel, <laughs> if you're not familiar with him, um, he introduced the dialectic. Dialectic says that we're supposed to have an argument, not an argument, a conversation. And that conversation of conflicting sides is supposed to lead to an advancement um, once it's done further towards the truth. And. You know, when I when I read Hegel, it sounds idealistic, this idea that two people who are conflicting ideologies can just debate back and forth to a point where you find some form of, you know, ideological, you know, development, like you move the idea forward. But mm -hmm. I truly believe that is a possible thing if you do it with genuine and, you know, positive intentions when you're talking to people. That's why I had this conversation. You're absolutely right. I had the choice of just making fun of you. Um, not you, but your practice and not yeah, break absolutely. Up. But like, I didn't do that because as a philosopher, I have to have this conversation. It's the only way I can advance this subject. Because mm -hmm. if we go about it in a disrespectful way where I'm saying astrology is paganism that shouldn't be followed and you should just listen to the word of God, that's not going to bring anyone on board. And it's not going to further the conversation at all, especially because mm -hmm. I'm speaking from a place of ignorance. Um, but I do want to say this. I'm I find it very interesting when you brought up historical mm -hmm. events being used as ways to prove that astrology did in fact happen. Because in my research, I did find that astrologers have predicted some very crazy things. Um, mm -hmm. It was John Dee who predicted that Queen Elizabeth would rise to the throne. And he did that in um, 1555. Queen Elizabeth had, a, she was the prince, uh, she was the princess at the moment. She asked him to create a chart for him, for, for her future, because her, there was rumors and speculations that her mother was going to kill her because her mother had mm. walked away because she felt threatened that she was going to take her position. And John D ended up creating a birth chart that said, not a birth chart, uh, a chart predicting her future that said, hey, yeah. you're going to be the queen of England. Your mom's, your, something, like, that's what's going to happen. Ironically enough, he gets arrested and the mother dies. She gets an illness and Queen Elizabeth becomes the queen of England. Um, mm -hmm. There was also Elsbeth Erhin, she created a in in April, she created um this prediction I believe it was a chart as well predicting that on April twentieth eighteen eighty nine there was a man who would be born that had the qualities to be someone that would bring Germany to a position where they'd be of great power and success. Hitler was born. On that Jesus. <laughs> Yeah. Oh. Can, I Can I add, add to that, that a little bit, bit too? Because those, those are really interesting. interesting. Ronald, Ronald Reagan, Reagan famously had an astrologer on on staff, staff. And, and the reason why he was so successful is because she timed his, his international diplomatic, diplomatic efforts, and, and that, that was where he made the biggest mark. Right? right? There, there, there's, there's a quote from I believe Warren Buffett that says, millionaires, "Millionaires don't have astrologers; billionaires do." Powerful people have been using astrology. For time, for time, like, like over, over time, time. Because, because it's, it's not, not moralistic and it doesn't have to be spiritual. spiritual. It's, it's tracking events. events. It's, it's tracking events. And, and so those, those are really old. I mean, they're very good examples. examples. They're also very old examples. examples. There's hella current examples. examples. Uh, uh, let, let me restate, restate that because of beeping. Um, um, there, there are, are many, many current examples, you know, including, you know, on my podcast, I want to predicted many things but one thing i talked about was that we would have starting in the spring major upsets to the presidential um ticket and that we should expect the unexpected and i don't know if you've noticed but things have been shaken up quite a bit um and, and there, there are, are many, many, many astrologers, me included, who have predictions, predictions about the upcoming election. election. Not, Not who will win, but what will happen in this country, country right? right? Um, and, and 
you know, you know not, not to interrupt you because what you're saying is so fascinating. fascinating. I want to hear more, but I, but, but I just, just want to say, say like, like, yes, yes. yes. astrology is good for that. And when I was reading it, there was a conflicting argument, um, especially in a, in a documentary I was watching um, by the History Channel, and they were saying, you know, it's great that um, these things were in fact predicted, but did it happen by luck? Did it happen? Because the perfect example was the uh, Elsbeth story, the woman who predicted uh, Hitler. Um, she got that information printed. Like that was actually printed in the newspaper. It was this huge thing for a couple of years. So the argument was maybe Hitler read that and thought. And then it gave him some. Listen, a broken clock is right twice a, twice a day, right? There's that expression. It, that's a very real, real um, issue. issue. And, and, you know, you know the, the funny thing, thing about me. Because I'm, I'm not interested, interested in proving, proving astrology, astrology is real or right. Or right. I'm, I'm not interested, interested in proving Christianity is right or wrong or, or Judaism or whatever. I really want people to use things that uplift them. them. For, For me, the, the way that I use astrology um, and the way that I've seen it used, it works. It works. It works. It works. It works. It works. I've, I've got, got lots of evidence to back me up. Um, but, but what I haven't done is tried to prove it in general. Um Whenever, whenever people, people go about, about like the History Channel or whatever, whenever, whenever they, they go about, about trying to prove or disprove uh, astrology, what, what I have found um, is, is that they don't really bring astrologers into the conversation. conversation. They don't meet with experts. And, and whenever somebody does the opposite of what you're doing right now, right? right? Somebody, somebody is like, I'm going to prove or disprove this thing, thing but I'm not going to talk to experts. I'm not going to talk to astrologers. I'll talk to people who have opinions about astrology. Um, they're, they're kind of telling on themselves because it's not a good faith argument, right? It's just not a good faith argument. I, you know, live in a Christian nation and I know a lot about Christianity, but I don't know enough about Christianity to speak on it. You know what I mean? Like, I know that. But, but most people who know a, a tiny, tiny, tiny fraction about astrology of what I know about Christianity feel confident to speak on it. And again, this is where we come back to the lack of respect for this ancient craft. It is an ancient craft. It has been used through millennia, through cultures. And to say that it's all garbage, I mean, to me, it feels like a form of hubris. But for a lot of people, they feel very confident with that. And again, to which to what I say, I mean, that's fine. You can do what you want. But... There's, There's, again, again through, through culture, culture, through millennia, millennia. and, you, you know, know nobody's going to tell me that three wise men were looking at a star in the sky like the children's book says. Like, like they weren't pointing at the star. They, they cast charts. charts. They, they were, were astrologers. astrologers. They were, the, the wise, wise men were scholars. scholars. They were astrologers. And, and there was no judgment around it. The judgment came in later, and it didn't come from God. It came from man. It came from Organized, organized religion, religion the organization, organization part. And, and I think it's, it's important when we love something, something whether it's religion, religion whether it's like the church, the, the state, astrology, astrology that, that we are critical of it. And, and you know, and, and I should say, say I, you know, this is speaking to what you were referring to about, you know, the, the struggling with things. things. I think that's really important. important. And, and, and it is, to, to me, a sign of, you know, loving something, questioning it. I, I think questioning, questioning things is good, but again, but again making sure that you're, you're actually keeping an open mind and you're, and you're adaptable in your thinking, thinking so you're listening, listening so that, that you can like, like you know, that, that, that's, that's, the, that's the magic, magic there. there. No, yeah, and I totally agree. And there's things I want to touch there, but it's going to be touched in uh, probably my last question. So we'll just keep going with the questions. Um, hey, hey. But I do appreciate, like, this is, I'm so glad I had this conversation. <laughs> yeah, 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 me too. too. Th this next part. <laughs> Um, you're going to love, because I know you have a big focus on the concept of, you know, astrology and its role in relationships. Um, so let me just, I'm going to end this with a question, but I do have to just sure, get sure. information first. So Pew Research um, released a study in 2023 that when asked, when they asked young people, and that's people that they identified the ages between 18 and 29, if they were single, mm -hmm. they found 63% of young males responded yes, in comparison to 34% of women who responded yes. Another report by the American Perspective Survey found that when they asked this same age group if they were interested in dating, 56% of men reported yes, and 36% of women said yes. When asked why they weren't interested in dating, the largest reason for women, with four, four out of ten women giving this as the answer, is because they're unable to find someone who meets their expectations, while the answer given by men, this is their lowest answer, two out of ten of the men said 
that was the reason why they were not interested in in um in dating. The reason being, as I already said, I can't find someone who meets the um the the things that I'm looking for. So, in other words, there is a gigantic gap between <laughs> single men and single women in American society. There is a significant gap between people who are interested in dating that are men and people who are interested in dating that are women. And there is a significant gap as to why they don't they are not interested in dating. I have to ask you, why mm -hmm. do you believe that exists? And mm. what is the role in astrology in this conversation? Mm. That's interesting. interesting. What, what is, is the role, role of astrology, astrology in this conversation? conversation? You know, you know I, 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 I have to pick at the poll for a minute, minute because, because it asked women, women are, are you interested, interested in dating? And, and I can say through my experience, experience as a consulting astrologer, astrologer yeah, yeah, young women aren't interested in dating. dating. They're interested in being in relationships. relationships. And, 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 and they didn't, and I don't know if this poll specifically said dating and it didn't give, not, they didn't say being in a relationship because a lot of times men are like, yeah, I'll date. And women are like, no, I want to be in a serious relationship. So that doesn't, I don't hear that poll and feel conclusively that the young women were saying, I don't want to be partnered. They're saying, I don't want to waste my time dating, which is a really different thing, right? You know. You, you can, can credit, credit astrology. astrology. I, I credit the internet. internet. I, I, I really think that men tell on themselves day and night, you, you know, know, when they, they post, post their ideas about women, about, about relationships, relationships, and women are seeing those posts, are reading, reading those words, and are like, uh, no, thank you. That's, that's not for me. me. Here's, Here's the thing. The, the internet, internet, the social media sites, sites that, that we, we all, all spend all our time, time on, right? Because right? you're, you're on YouTube, YouTube right? Like YouTube. YouTube. They, they make their money based on our outrage, right? right? So, so they create these radicalized communities, these algorithms. algorithms. And this, this is not about astrology, astrology although astrology gets implicated in it, right? In it, right? Um, and, and what, what do women want, want to be served? What will, what will create outrage or what will create like a sense of healing, a sense of connection? It's how can I help myself? How, how can, can I figure out how to be in relationship to people? And, and what, what seems, seems to trigger men other than other than porn and, and like, you know, like, like bodies um, is, is outrage. outrage. It's, it's how we have a world of incels, right? right? It's how we have a lot of violent, radicalized groups. groups. And, and women are not for it. Women are, of course, you know, majoritively not for it. And I think it is very important when we look at these statistics that we keep in mind. Then, then in the 19, 19 I was born in the 1970s. 1970s. In the, in the 19, 19, in the early 1970s, 1970s women couldn't have bank, bank accounts. accounts. Women, women couldn't have bank accounts without a father or a husband co-signing. Co the, the rights of women are still very fresh. fresh. They've, They've not, not been along, around, around for very long. So, so we are experiencing how heterosexuality fares when, when women have rights and men have to adapt and evolve to meet women in the middle instead of having women serve them. Because, because no, no person, person wants to be a servant. Be a servant. Yeah. And, and a lot, lot of people love the idea of being, you know, not, not having a job, having, having a man take care, take care of them, staying at home, uh, you know, you know man managing, managing the house, managing kids. kids. For, For a lot, lot of women, women that's, that's a happy place. place. That, that is that is their calling and that is their joy. joy. But for a lot of women, for a lot of women, it is not. They want somebody who's going to share the housework. They want somebody who's, you know, you know going to encourage them to be as successful, successful as they can possibly be. be. And, and in, in my, my opinion, opinion, you know, you know this, this is nothing to do with astrology, astrology although astrology gets, gets in the mix there. there. Um, women, women have evolved a lot in society, society as, as we have had more economic, economic freedom, freedom, more economic power, more body autonomy. We've had more rights. And men haven't changed at the same pace that women have. And men need to. Because either what we will have is a far right um, kind of taking away of women's body autonomy, taking away of women's rights so that women are forced into a subservient position again, or men will adapt. Either or. And what I see happening, certainly from online stuff, because I'm older, I'm not in the, you know, in my 20s, um, but what I see happening is a lot, a lot of men, men are just like, like why, why should I adapt? adapt? Things, Things were better before. before. Yeah. And I think, I think they, they were better, better for men. Uh, you, you know, know I was just, I just, I just saw the statistics. statistics. I, I wish I had it in front of me. me. But, but men who get married, 
They, they live, live longer. longer. They have, they have better, better health. health. Yeah. They, they make, make more money, money at work. work. Women, Women who get married, they, they die younger. younger. They, they are less happy. happy. They, they make less money. money. It's, 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 not, it's not equally beneficial for both parties. parties. And, and that's, that's the problem. problem. Yeah. And, and it's, it's not astrology. astrology. It's, it's not anything. It's as society evolves, everyone needs to evolve together. together. And this is where we see, you know, this really intense, uh, far, far right racist, racist regime, regime that, that has come, come up in the United States, States after Obama's, Obama's presidency. They were like, uh oh, people of color are going to have rights. We can't have that. that. And, and there, there has been a really aggressive move, uh, change in society where so many white people and other people, but primarily white people, have really um, started to show to, to show their racism. racism. And, and Similarly, we are seeing this within the patriarchy. We're seeing this with 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 with, with sexes. And, and I know this is not the answer you were hoping for, and it has nothing to do with astrology. But we cannot pin the the evolution of the sexes, which exists across racial, class, and religious demographics, on religion alone. We can't because not everyone's Christian. Not everyone likes astrology. I don't think it's about any of that. I think it's about Men's, men's failure, failure to evolve, evolve with, with the, the times. times. So the reason why I asked this question the way I did was because when I hear about this situation, I see marriage rates are dropping. I see that younger men are becoming um, what you're calling incels, and a lot of them are staying single. They're in terrible situations um, romantically, and women are just not interested in being with these type of individuals. I always have to I have to turn back to you know my philosophy, but also my theology and my faith tells me. Um, I'm not a subscriber of the idea that women are to be subjugated to man um, to a sense where it's like, I'm telling you what to do. I'm telling you who you need to be. Um, I I understand that in the New Testament, it's very clear. The covenant is very clear that, um, you know, women are to, you know, basically you become subservient to your husband. But in the same breath, it says men have a have to take up a mantle of that, too going back to your conversation of it's not just a one-sided deal. Marriage mm -hmm. is a union that requires for both people to make necessary sacrifices, even depending on the time. Because um, I do agree with you that I think that would a lot that's happened is conservatives, um, especially, you know, religious conservatives that were benefiting off patriarchy, benefiting off the previous system are very frustrated and they want to regress back to conservative society, conservative systems. I know just off of my understanding of the Bible, God's word is infinite. It is forever. So there is no such thing as traditional Christianity. That's not a concept. They made that up. The Christian word is supposed to exist in every society. If not, then it wouldn't be the word of God because it's not able to be replicated in whatever whatever situation you're in. So I think what happened was they didn't, they're not upset that the word is being practiced. They're upset that it's not being practiced the way they want it to be practiced. And... I know that my answer to this question would be this. You need to stop acting this way. You're acting like a jackass. That's what Christianity would tell me. You're not moving with love. Your, you, your union is not, um, is not a partnership. It's one-sided. It is slavery. And it is wrong. Um, I'm asking you, what would astrology give me as an answer for this type of problem? Hmm. This, this is, is a really, really interesting, interesting way that you're framing, framing it because you're framing, framing it from a Christian perspective, perspective right? right? From, from the perspective. perspective oh, just, and I'm sorry to interrupt you. So more yeah, yeah like please. Faith giving you an answer. I <laughs> went to my faith for an answer. I went to my scripture for an answer. And that's the answer it would give me. If you're interpreting it in the way you're supposed to as a Christian, I can also go to Islam and it would give me an interpretation as well. I can go to Hinduism. They're going to give me an interpretation as well. Mm -hmm. Astrology is not, not like that. that. Astrology is not theology. That's, That's what I'm saying. saying. Astrology is not theology. theology. So, so one could believe that one could be a serious, serious Christian, Christian who could, could believe that women, women should be subservient to men and use astrology and back that up. One, one could be like, like me and, and could believe that no person, person should be subservient to another, another and, and that any, any man, man who says <laughs> that a woman should serve him, him should, should think about whether or not he would like how that felt. Um, I, I, I am. Yeah, yeah it, it gives, gives me the rage, rage to hear it, it even. Um, but, but yeah, to me, 
there's, there's no, no theology, theology to astrology. That's, that's what I'm saying. I'm saying. It's not a belief system because, because there's, there's no theology, theology there. there. So, so I believe, believe part, part of why women really, really resonate, resonate and young people, people um, the girls and the gays, really, really resonate, resonate with astrology is because there isn't a theology. Instead, what there is is... This, this blueprint, blueprint to who you are, to your, to your dignity, to, to your free will, will to, to your predestiny, predestiny to, to what is an integrity and alignment for you, how to be a good person, person how to heal from trauma, trauma how to show up in the world, how to manage your finances, you know, you know what, what health issues, issues to look out for, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. And, and that, that is not based on a theology of this is what you should do and what you shouldn't do, you know, and and I think that that really appeals to people because what you're saying I respect, I respect it, and it's true for you, and I'm not Christian, and I, you know, do not believe in anything that Christians believe in. I mean, I have, you know, shared values, um, but I don't believe in the theology because I'm not a Christian, and I don't believe that Christians should, you know, Christians have and Christians do. Christians are very intense about this, but I don't think Christians should try to force other people to be Christians. I think that there are many pathways to God, and there are many pathways to love, and to, to integrity, integrity and, and all these things. things. And, and, and I know that this is offensive to a lot of Christians and a lot of Christians would are going to be very upset with me for saying what, what I'm saying. saying. And it, it is simply what I think. think. And it, there, there has to be room in this world for us to disagree with each other as long as my neck, my boot is not on your neck. If my boot is not on your neck and I disagree with you, so be it. Like go and like God. However, if our disagreement is rooted in some way, on, on me having, having control, control or power over, over you, you, well, well now, now we have, have a real problem. problem. Yeah. And, and again, again coming back, back to your core question, question, I think a lot of young women would say that, that being partnered, partnered with men requires, requires for them to tolerate someone's, someone's boot on their neck. neck. And, and I, don't, I, don't I don't see why anyone would choose that. that. And, and a lot of women don't have that feeling, right? I want to say to the women who are listening to this one, be like, what are you even talking about? That's not how I feel. That's not how you feel. But, but that's, that's how, how a lot, lot of women feel. feel. Yeah. And, 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 and it's, it's not from nothing. nothing. It's, it's not from nothing. nothing. It's from their experiences. It's from, from what, they see, from what they, they see online. It's from what they've seen, seen their friends go through. Go through. It's, it's from, from real life. life. And, and when religion, religion spirituality, spiritualism, spiritualism doesn't match up with, with the lived experience, experience then, then it's failing us. Because whether we're looking at scripture or we're looking at astrology or we're just looking at, you know, vibes, it, it has, has to, to relate, relate to the human experience. experience. Otherwise, it's theory, theory. Yeah. you know. Yeah. yeah. So, so this, this is, is where this is where why astrology. This is why the, the, I, I didn't answer the question quite like you wanted because again, astrology and theology, and they're, 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 yeah, yeah, they don't do it. Mm -hmm. So I have two more questions, and then we're going to be done. Um, and this is I, I can talk to you all day. day. <laughs> keep keep them coming. I love that. I love that. Thank you so much. And I can talk to you all day. I really enjoy this. And I do. Before I ask this question, like I want to clarify. So we, because I, I finally understood what you're trying to say here with astrology and I get it's a tool and when, you made it perfect. You said it perfectly when you said, if I wanted to push either side of my agenda, I could use astrology to do it. Mm -hmm. And that just showed me that what I've known astrology to be is not what you think it to be. Um, and the way I know it to be is what it's been shown to me by others in my generation. My generation has treated it as a theology. And mm. they have they have went to astrology to answer questions on their existence and what they should do fundamentally in their existence. And I've always yes. found that yes. troubling because the thing that people don't understand about spirituality, because a lot of people don't, uh, not spirit, uh, about religious spirituality, because a lot of people don't actually read religious scripture or text, is that it's not a rule book. That's the idea that people have put out because they're ignorant and they don't read. Like we've, this is how we started this conversation was mm -hmm. being loud and ignorant. But religion is not <laughs> a rule book. It's supposed to be a way of life. And it's very ironic that whenever we talk about religion being a way of life, it only seems to be reserved for the, the Asian cultures. You know, the Asian religions tend to be the ones that people view as like like Buddhism, like, oh, this is the religion mm. that is very rooted in spiritualism and it's a way of life. No, Christianity is a way of life. Hindu um, Hinduism is a way of life. Islam is a way of life. They're, they're, they're not rules. They're a guidebook. It's a framework. It's something you turn to when you're confused on what decision to make in your current context of existence. Like you said, if it can't be applied in your existence, then it's just theory. And if it's not applicable in our in our society, it's just theory. 
religion isn't that. It, it, the the reason why it's written in stories and like these generalities um, is because it's supposed to be designed to do that. So when I'm talking to people who are doing astrology, I'm they're presenting it to me in the same context of that. That this is mm -hmm. a f belief system that I could come to and I'm able to say, hey, I don't know what to do about this person treating me poorly. And they're like, well, I'll give you the fundamental answer if you just go to if you go to um if you go to uh, astrology. And it's like To be fair, I should I should say, to be fair, as a consulting astrologer, I'm answering, I'm answering those questions, questions all day long. long. Yes. yes. That's, that's true. true. That's that is true. true. But, but the, the way, way that, that I'm answering, answering them is, is again, again it's, it's not, not telling, telling people what to do. do. It's, it's helping people identify, identify what the problem is, what, what their, their options are, are and, and therefore what, what they're capable of, what they can do, which, which is, I think, more nuanced, more nuanced and personalized than, than like one, one book that applies to all the people, people right? Um, but, but not, not to poo-poo poo on, on the Bible, Bible. trust me, that's not what I meant by that. that. I, just I just meant, meant like, like it, it is. Like further explain it so like we can yes. Where I'm coming from mentally, because I see where yes. I'm coming from mentally. And, I'm and, and, and the, the truth is, I answer questions, questions like that all the time. I have tens of thousands of questions in my inbox from people who want readings from me, and probably 99% of them are like, tell me what to do on some level. And the that's true. That's true. But here's the but. That. We got, we got to turn to, to okay. okay, I'm, I'm, I'm going to risk offending, offending you and I apologize in advance. Okay. 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 Some, Some of that comes back to you guys. Okay. okay. Be, okay. Right. right. Because, because what, what, what I think, think that Christianity, Christianity does is it tells people, if, if you're good, you go, you go to heaven and good, good things will happen to you in this life. life. And, and if you're bad, bad you go to hell and bad things happen to you in this life. Right? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We are on the same page. That's not what it says. That's what they tell No, it's not. It's it's not. It's, it's an oversimplification, like, like sun sign horoscopes. It's, it's an oversimplification and a misunderstanding that people apply and have run generations. generations. They've run their lives on. And so, and so what, what happens, happens is people are like, I'm, I'm a good person. person. I'm, I'm trying really hard. And bad, bad things keep happening. happening. There, there must, must be something wrong with me. I must, I must be doing, doing something wrong because of this Christian, this permeated Christian belief of... If you're, if you're bad, bad you, go you go to hell. hell. Bye. If you're, if you're good, good, you go to heaven. You're, you're happy, right? right? There's, there's, there's hurt. <laughs> yeah, there, there you go. go. There, there you go. go. And, and so, so, so this, this is where people often will turn to astrology, astrology because, because they're just like, like I, I want feedback on how I can co-create my reality. reality. You, know you know what I mean? So when people use, use astrology, astrology in an oversimplified way, way like the TikTokification of astrology, you know, you know what I'm talking about, about which is again for, for, for Gen Z and, and, and perhaps, perhaps for the alpha generation. generation. It, it, it is an, an oversimplification, right? right? People, People are looking for simple answers for complex issues. issues and, that's and that's always going to run you into a problem. problem. I uh, have, have used WebMD, WebMD a lot. I've, I've, been I've been like, I see a rash, rash. I have a pain, pain. WebMD, Web tell, tell me what it is. And, and you know what that never is? The same, the same as going to a doctor. doctor. And, you and you know what? what? I've, I've gone to lots of doctors, doctors who haven't helped me. And I've, and I've gone, gone to lots of doctors, doctors who have. have. It's all to say there isn't one way. way. But, but the, the way, way that we can trust is not substantive, is WebMD is not a way to diagnose and treat a medical illness. Right? It's like a tool, like sun sign astrology or seeking a simple answer to a complex topic. And, and some, some of what you're talking about is being, being a young person, person on the, on the internet, internet with a microphone. microphone. Honestly, honestly, honestly. Some, some of some, some of what, what you're talking about is being in your 20s, being, 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 being loud, proud, and wrong, right? right? And, and so, so it's, it's like, like I am so grateful, grateful that when I was in my 20s, I didn't have the internet because when I was in my 20s, I was just as ridiculous as everybody else. But there's no there's no like online record of it. And I think a lot of people in their 20s who use astrology in a particular way and post about it all these ways may look in the next 10, 20, 30 years and be like, ah. Oh, I wish I, wish I could, could get, get that off the internet. internet. You know what I mean? Because we evolve. evolved. So, so for whatever, whatever that's worth. I thank you for that because it does provide clarity to what I've been seeing and what I've been dealing with because you're absolutely right. Complex issues, there is not a simple solution. It's the same way with um, theology. Theology has the same problem. I've had people yes. come up to me because I'm very open about the fact that I am Christian and people will be like, I don't know what to do in this situation. And I'm going to be honest with you. In the Bible, it says very clearly, Sometimes the answers is not in that book. You got to just pray and go out there and figure it out. And 
that is kind of how life is. Yeah, yes. What answer you give your clients, it's up to when they go out there, try it and figure it out. Um, yeah, yes. Because there's just an inability. Even God recognizes the inability to give all answers in one thing. It's just not possible. And, and to that, can, can I just say, prayer, prayer is not, not meant, and I wonder if you agree with this, this. Prayer, prayer is not, not meant to be like, like using Google, Google right? right? You, you sit, sit and you pray on it, you get an answer, answer right? right? You, you know, know what I'm saying, saying. right? It's, it's not Google. Google. It's prayer is a, is a practice. practice. It is. It's, it's, it's being in relationship with God, the universe, whatever you want to call it, however it makes you most comfortable. Prayer is... It's, it's a way, way of knowing, knowing yourself, yourself through God, through, God, through practice, practice, through, through presence. presence. And, and, you know, you can do it in a Buddhist way. You can do it in a, in a new age way. You can do it in a Christian way. Prayer is just good for the soul. And the very practice of turning to someone and being like, you know the Bible. Tell me what to do. It's like trying to like line jump. You know, you know what I mean? It's, it's trying to be like, like I'm going to get all the wisdom of sitting on this line, line and being in my thoughts and being in my feelings. feelings. And I'm just going to have somebody at the top, at the front of the line, line who's been standing on this line, line the whole time, time let me in. in. And, the and the truth is, that, that very rarely serves anyone, right? right? And, and a lot of people like the power of saying, saying yeah, yeah, I know theology. I'm going to be the word of God to you. You can come to me for the word of God. It's a power play. It's, it's, and the same, the same thing works with astrology. With astrology. People, People are like, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Let, Let me tell, tell you about your chart. chart. Let, Let me tell you about your sign. sign. And some, some of that is just power plays. plays. And it is a, a real shame because the, the practice of being, being a person, person, being a person with a spiritual center, center it, it requires being in uncertainty in not knowing and, and still being connected to your faith or to your integrity or whatever it is. And, and a, a lot, lot of people, people were so impatient, we just want to skip the steps. We want to skip the steps to get to, you know, you know the certainty. certainty. And why would God or the universe place us here on this earth in these bodies, bodies if all we needed to do was Google through prayer? prayer. Like, like that, what, what is the, why, why would we live for 90 years? We could do that in five years, years no? Like, like that's not what the human condition is. And again, I don't think at core... Your, your spiritual, spiritual practice and, and my spiritual practice are that radically different. different. Yeah, yeah, the, the ideas, ideas behind it are, you know, but, but, but the practice isn't because it's just a practice of being in, in right, right relationship, relationship. Yeah. really, you yeah. know? And, and I'm going to be honest with you, even when it comes to the ideas, I think you and me probably have very, and we're going to, we're going to go over this with that last question. Um, okay, okay. Ask you, but I think we have a fundamentally similar viewpoint on what it means to be a good person. And I think that's mm -hmm. what matters at the end of the day, because that, yes. yes. that is the fundamental principle of Christianity is cr loving through Christ as Christ would. And it is yeah. not what we're doing right now. Um, but mm -hmm. let me ask this question, because you said a lot there that was so important, especially in this conversation of just general practice of these beliefs. So according to a 2024 Gallup report, three out of 10 Americans reported attending some form of religious service, a 12 point percentage drop from two decades ago. <laughs> the same report found that Americans with no religious affiliation rose from 9% in 2000 to 21% in 2023. In 2002, another Gallup poll found that 68% of young people believed in God, the lowest amongst every age group surveyed. In comparison, a Harris poll that was done in 2024 reported that 83% of millennials supported being either somewhat or a total believer in astrology compared mm -hmm. to 62% of Gen Z and 68% of Americans at large. 95% of those who were surveyed knew their Zodiac sign and 65% said they thought it was an accurate representation of themselves. Mm. Hearing that information, can you tell me why this shift is taking place, number one? And number two, are we simply moving away from this cookie-cutter understanding of religion and moving towards a cookie-cutter understanding of uh, astrology. Interesting. 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 There's, There's layers of, 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 of my response to that. To that. And uh, I, I mean, listening, listening to those stats, stats is staggering. staggering. You know, you know, I'm hearing them for the first time. So I'm like, wow, that, that is surprising. Listen, religious, religious institutions have failed people. people. They, they have, have. They, they just have. have. And, 
And this has to do with, like, I think back to 2020, when COVID first hit, how mega churches closed their doors. They closed their doors. Yeah, old thing. Thank you. Thank you. Um, you know, I'm th- I think about how so many times when you see or when I see people on the street, you know, giving food or water to homeless folks, it comes with proselytizing. It's not just a gift inspired by my my love of God. It comes with proselytizing. It comes with, with, a, with, a, with a, a drive to convert. When, when you think, think about how the most vulnerable, vulnerable people in society are not, are not consistently held by, by any religion, right? right? They're, They're not consistently protected by any religion. religion. If, if they, they were, then you would see, you know, synagogues, synagogues and, and churches and mosques and, mosques and, all, these and all these places filled, filled with disabled people. people. I agree. You never you see them there. And, and we're, we're not, not never, but that is just not the bulk of what we see. see. And um, and I'm aware that the light is like playing on me in this very dramatic way. I, I didn't do it. It's just happening with the light. Sorry about that. Um, but but all to say, it's not just that it's happening and we're seeing it. It's that the internet has a memory, right? Like we are all seeing what's happening from city to city, and state to state, community to community. And we're all paying attention, whereas... Astrology, astrology is accessible. Is accessible. It's, it's not, not judgmental. judgmental. No, no one gets kicked out of their house for, for you know, not, not being the right kind of Libra. Libra. And people do get kicked out of their house for not being the right kind of Christian. Yeah. And I think it's a failure of the institution, not, not of the religion itself. itself. I'm, I'm not talking about the theology. I'm not talking about Christ. I'm not talking about any of that. It's about the institution. Institutions are fragile. Institutions are man-made. And they... Need, need to change, change and evolve. Every institution that, that we can look at in the 1400s has changed and evolved or is toxic and terrible. terrible. That's, That's it. Same, same thing, thing you know, from the 1950s. We have, have to evolve. And I and, and I think that in, in religion, the, the men in power are loath to give up their power. power. They're, They're loath to change. change. And, and that's, that's a real shame, shame because they are leaving people behind. behind. And, and I'm, I'm not saying this, they could be converting more people. I'm not interested in people getting converted. I'm interested in people, interested in people being held, people being spoken to, people being served. Because spirit is, spirituality is supposed to serve the people. Now let's, now let's talk about astrology. Astrology, astrology serves, serves people. people. We, we might not like it completely. completely. You, and you and I, I could, could have like a whole other hour and a half long conversation about how it, 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 it is problematic. You're used, used in problematic ways, ways but it serves people. Because when someone is having a rough day, day and they're like, what, what is wrong? wrong? Why, Why is everything I'm touching turning to, to poo? poo? They, they can turn to an astrologer like me or somebody else and find out what transit is happening and be like, it's, it's not, not just me. me. There's, There's this larger thing at play. play. And, and when, when they, they learn about this larger thing at play, they can start to understand how they're participating. They can learn, they can learn about themselves. themselves. Now, that's, that's not, not the kind of astrology you've had access to, right? right? That's, that's not how astrology is being used in your world. But I do believe that a lot of people, I mean, I know the numbers of people who like listen to my podcast and like stuff like that. Like, I do believe that a lot of people are using substantive astrology, not all the time, but sometimes. And, and they're, they're getting help. help. They're, they're getting, getting service. And, and it's, it's helping them help themselves. themselves. And, and I, I think, think that that, that is where um, every, every person who is, is like, oh, I'm X religion and I want there to be more people who are of my religion. religion. They, they should be thinking not about how to get people to agree with them, but how to serve people. Exactly. Because if you make people feel good, if you support people, they're in there with you. They're going to be interested in you. It's not complicated, right? Yeah, yeah, I love like it's the it's literally two different viewpoints, but it's the same understanding of why things. It's, it's the same, same understanding, understanding of why, why. And, this and this is, is what I, this is, is where I just like the, the details, details of some of the things, things you believe and I believe. I'm sure would be radically different. I am sure we could we could fight, right? We could disagree, but it doesn't actually matter because at the end of the day, if you and I both value. Being, being adaptable, adaptable listening, listening, learning. If we, if we know how to stay open-hearted in disagreement, then, then unless one of us puts our boot on the other one's neck, neck why would we have a conflict, conflict right? And, and this, this is something that, that I don't. I think transcends the astrology religion conversation. conversation. It's, it's really. I think, I think it, again, again I, I blame the internet for a lot of this. Is you know the way the algorithms feed us. What it does is it starves us of the skill. Of, of interacting with people who have difference from us in a, in a way, way that, that is neighborly, neighborly right? right? 
and, and, again, and again, I don't, I don't think, think we can blame Christianity, Christianity astrology, or anything else on it. I think I think, I think we, we have, have to, to, to. I think we need more regulation on the internet, on the internet. And, and that is a whole other conversation. But I feel like it's an important part of this conversation because my algorithm will only show me things that I agree with. It's never going to show me what you're talking about. Actually, it's not true. I do. I am on the side of TikTok where I hear theologians, you know, Christian theologians, talking about stuff. Like I'm interested in that. But, but I'm guessing, guessing you're not, not being served, served like, like, you know, substantive, substantive astrology, astrology because it's, it's not, not keeping your attention. attention. You're scrolling past it. You scroll past it, scroll past it three times, times you'll, you'll never, you'll never see, see it again. Because the, the algorithm, algorithm wants your attention. It doesn't want to teach you something. something. It, it wants you to stay. Yeah. And we, we all have to keep that in mind, right? And I thank you so much for that answer because it really does get back to this greater conversation of why this is happening. You're right. I think it's a combination of things. It's beyond just religion and astrology, the appeal of astrology or, and you know, the way religion is booting people and pushing them away. It's also this idea of like, no one's actually getting legitimate information about how things work. And it's because actually learning is not profitable. Learning yeah. isn't profitable. Um, yeah. It is the cookie cutter that is profitable because it takes less time to retain and it's able to present you something else after you already learned that cookie cutter information and keep you trapped in that. I read a book, um, you, you'd probably love it. It's called Society of the Spectacle by a guy, DeBoer. He was a Marxist and he talked about this exact thing in the 1950s and just how hypermedia and the Society of the Spectacle would create mm -hmm. this kind of matrix concept for us where we're just being, we're just a society of images, being fed images Images teaching mm -hmm. us in a value of purpose, and it, it's because they're images we just lack understanding of value. Because an image can't teach you value, an image yes. can't teach you information the same way a tweet can't or a video can't. These are things yep. you have to learn through experience in real life. So, I totally agree with that, and I respect that viewpoint. Um, the biggest reason why I asked that question is going to lead to this final question: is because as a society, my I know this to be true. Um, because I know what is really engraved in my belief system. I know Christianity could be used for good because I know what Christ was. Christ was is recognized by a lot of people as one of the first activists to ever live. He denounced mm -hmm. his government. He lived in poverty. He refused to take, like I, he, he would have been defined as homeless. He, the mm -hmm. encampments that they're destroying right now, Christ would have lived in one of them. Before yep. he was crucified, he was sleeping in a garden like the night before. Um, so like when I hear his, like when I, when I read his word, I'm like, okay, I know this can fundamentally be used to push good because he's mm -hmm. always taught about humility and grace. The things you're saying, I learned from the Bible. I was afraid because I am surrounded by a lot of people, especially women. And this is what was really concerning because women dictate culture, mm. whether people want to admit it or not, because men want to do what women are doing, regardless of whether men want to admit it or not. <laughs> and um, the power that women have is real. They're the ones They're teaching your children. They're the ones raising your children. I worked at a public school. It was all women. So mm -hmm. if there are a bunch of women walking around with a fundamental philosophy that is telling them that astrology and looking at the stars will give them an answer for every problem in their life, we have a problem. Mm. Okay, because but. you'd be spreading that to the masses the same way you would if you thought theology was a fundamental solution to all your problems. So, so this, this is where, where this is where I would say, say y'all had your turn. turn. Generations, generations. generations. So, so we, we don't, don't know. know. Listen, listen, you know, you know what? what? We we, we, we might, might have a problem. problem. Is it, it going to be a bigger, bigger problem that Christianity, Christianity created? created? No. I don't know. I don't know. And and I think that this is really important because. Women, women shouldn't, shouldn't be raising, raising children. children. Men, Men and women, women should be raising children. children. I, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm, 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 I'm here. Like, like, there is no reason in this time that, that women are still raising, raising children. children. It, should it should be men, men and, and women. women. Because, because I... Listen, listen, I'm part of the latchkey generation. generation. I don't know if you've heard of this. It's like Gen X. It was latchkey. It was like my generation was the first one where people really got divorced. Where women could get divorced, right? And so... When, when women, women could get divorced, divorced they, were like, they were like, I'm out, let, let me go. go. And, and so, so I'm part of a generation where most, most of my peers weren't raised with fathers. fathers. They, weren't they weren't raised by fathers. fathers. They weren't raised with, with fathers. fathers. And, and that's, that's way before astrology became, became a thing. Yeah. And, and to me, this is where I, again, you know, I, I take it from the spiritual point, which I think is a trickle down to the culture. And I bring it back in the laps of men. And I say, be better. I agree. Be better. Do, Do more. more.
Yeah. yeah. And, 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 and when, when men are more active parts, parts of society, society. where they're, they're yeah, yeah, going, going where women are because they want to be where women are, but also do your own interesting thing. Have your own close friendships. Like have your own beliefs that, again, don't gently place your boot on a woman's neck. Do things where you become your own interesting, dynamic person who is netted in service, not dictating what service should be, but practicing the service. Then women will be where you are. And then you can have complex conversations about astrology and it evolves organically. This, this is, is the thing, thing is that, that there's a lot of the popularity of astrology, astrology which I blame, you know, you know I point to the internet and I point to capitalism. capitalism. But the, the only reason why astrology is as popular as it is, is, it is, is because, because it serves people. people. Yeah. And, and if, if you, you if, if everyone, everyone was being served by the church and then the church, church, church stopped, stopped serving them. And so they were like, oh, wait, this is serving me better. Well, then, well, then the church, church has got to improve, improve what it's doing. doing. And, and if men, men yeah, and the same thing with men, men, men need to improve what they're doing. doing. And, and I think this is where my hope is that, is that men are willing to, to, to be, be in vulnerability and, and to understand, understand that there, there, there is not an answer. answer. The, the answer is follow for, for a while. while. Follow. You know, you know men, men are so empowered, empowered and told to lead. You're a big, strong boy and all, all this stuff. stuff. Men, men need to learn how to follow be, and, and not, not chase tail. tail. I'm, I'm talking, talking about, like, following the example. The, the reason, reason why astrology resonates, resonates with all these women is because, is because it's a language for understanding interpersonal connections. connections. Okay. And, and the church doesn't offer that anymore. anymore. It offers rules. Now, I know you say that it doesn't. No, 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 no. Let me make this clear. Yeah. yeah. My interpretation of what okay. the book is saying is it is not a rule book. Right. What right. They're pushing out is that it is in fact a rule book, and I'm in full agreement with you. I yeah. Yes. Think it, I'm it, defending modern religion here. I, 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 and, and, and I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to knock, knock it down. And I, and I don't, don't feel like you're you're, you're defending, defending it. it. But, but, but but again, it's like, like a. I think, I think we're both being careful with each other out of respect. And and I think that's good. I think that's I think that's so that that's good with me. But. I think, I think I would, I would encourage, encourage you, being, being the theologist, theologist that you are, that you are. Yeah. Next, next time you, you get around, around uh, a, nice a nice young woman your age who's, who's talking to you about astrology, ask questions, not, not to debunk, not, not to, to test, test the veracity of her, of her theology or her comprehension, comprehension. Yeah. But, but to understand, understand the emotions underneath it, because, because that's how you understand why people are turning to astrology. It's for how it makes them feel. It's, it's for the feeling of greater, greater clarity and guidance. And if you're curious about that, you can, you can meet her in a conversation where she's not just hearing the same shit she's heard over and over, where she's not just hearing the same stuff she's heard over and over again from a man. But instead, you're meeting her in the emotional conversation because that's that's where what we're doing. We're having an emotional conversation. Yeah. And, and I want you to understand, I'm not saying that it's bad that astrology is getting to the forefront. That's never been my argument here. I, I, my my argument was, I already saw this play already. I already saw what happens when a form of spirituality or what people view as a form of spirituality that they're treating as cooker, cookie cutter nonsense and they're mm -hmm. not actually fully understanding it. What happens when they take it up and put it to the mantle? It leads to a lot of problematic situations. And um, this is what leads to my final question. What is the role of astrology in the modern era? Because right now I'm mm -hmm. I'm seeing the last the the remaining ramifications of religion. What's happening right now in Palestine is the most disgusting thing I've ever seen in my lifetime. Yes. I've seen a lot. Yes. But I think it's disgusting because I know as a Christian, Christ would have would have jumped and demanded the end of that situation. Yes. Because it is evil. Yes. Really innocent. There is no justification. And I think it's almost in every major religion. There is no justification for yes. Yes. killing the innocent. There just isn't one. They have yes. continuously said in every, and I can give you every scripture that says in the Bible, hey, you have to protect the weak. You can't kill the innocent. Even yeah. if yeah. it costs you your own life, you have to defend the innocent because denouncing evil goes above all else. It's in the Quran. It's in the Buddhist, I mean, the Buddhist Bibles. It's, I, I just don't understand yeah. yeah. How we've got to that point with those type of situations. You're in you're in San Francisco, right? I'm sorry. You're in Oakland right now. Oakland. I know mm -hmm. how bad the encampment issue is in, out in Los Angeles, California. And oh, oh, it's back here. here. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. The yeah. governor has passed the law to start kicking people out. And it goes mm -hmm. back to your conversation of service. I understand religion is not a concept of service. Modern religion doesn't serve anyone. It mm -hmm. really does. And 
the fact that the Christians and the cat and the Catholics and the Muslims and the Jews and all these different type of groups are just sitting there, and I'm not saying all of them, but a lot of them are sitting there watching homeless people get taken out of these encampments and not providing them with housing. The fact that they've remained silent on the Israeli issue just keep sending their thoughts and prayers with a bunch of bombs attached to their thoughts and prayers. Yeah. Shows me that I know faith isn't in action, but I know why there is no faith in action, why there is no active spiritualism. It's mm. because they treat their spiritualism like cookie cutter information for them to preach and push on others. And my point was, I'm watching astrology follow the same path. That's why I'm mm. asking you, where can astrology go different in the modern interesting. era? You know, you know it's, it's interesting. interesting. And, and I'm, I'm not sure, sure if this is exactly what you mean, but like in my public use of astrology, astrology I, speak I speak out against, against the genocide, genocide in Palestine, Palestine in, in Sudan, Sudan, in, in Congo. Congo. I... Um, you know, you know, I right, right now, as we speak, we're, we're, we're I'm editing, editing an episode, episode I recorded um, for this weekend, weekend where I acknowledge the horrifying race, race riots in uh, the UK. UK right. So, so the, the way that, that I use astrology is not just to talk about like how you get along with people, people but what's happening in the world and how and why you should care, how and why you should get involved, how and why you should find a way to be a part of the solution, to speak up, to act out, to understand that that solidarity is not thoughts and prayers. It's not just thinking about people. It is not suffering alongside people. It is actively helping people out of their suffering, not in a saviorism way. But, but so, 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 you know, you know I, I, I will say that there, I'm not the only astrologer who does, who does this. Again, Again I, should I should say, say. I'm, I'm a 50 year old astrologer. astrologer. I'm, I'm an adult, adult astrologer, astrologer who's been doing it for 30 years. years. And, and I think that, that and, this and this is something we haven't gotten into, but you know, astrology is an unregulated field. field. If you, you want to become a theologian of Christianity, there's like a structure. You can't just be like, I studied the Bible. I'm Actually, you can, can't, can't you? you? But anyways, you it's to be, you're, you're not supposed to. As a reverend or a minister, you do have to go through right. some form of training. You have to go through, and that doesn't, doesn't exist with astrology. I mean, there's, in, in the UK, there's actually Kepler College, which um, uh, we, we mentioned Kepler earlier. earlier. Um, and, and there, there is like, like a credit, there are accreditation programs, but there's no legal tracking of astrology in that way, for better and for worse. And and so any person with a phone can be like, I'm an astrologer, here's astrology. And this comes back to media literacy, right? To knowing the difference between somebody who's just like talking, you know, anyone could look at my content, write some notes, and then say it in their own words, right? And anyone could just make anything up. The truth of the matter is we need media literacy. And we need, we need discernment, discernment because, because there are astrologers like me. I'm not the only one who care about the world, who motivate people to do right, to think about what is right. Yeah. And in terms of whether or not that's where astrology is going in the culture, I can't speak to that. But what I can do is my damnedest to be a part of the culture, to be a part of the conversation so that I'm speaking out about Important, important topics, topics including but not limited to Palestine, Palestine and encourage people to figure out what they believe, because, because not everyone's going to be as progressive as I am. Not, not everyone's going to have the same values as I do, but, but to figure out what they believe, what, what their values are, and to act in alignment with those things. And whether you use astrology or not, it's immaterial to me. What is material to me is that each and every one of us do better. Day by day, we try. And when we fall, because we will fall, that we get up and we learn from the fall and we keep on trying. And when we have like a bunch of days in a row where we don't fall, we extend a hand and hold some, hold it out for someone to help them up. That is what, to your point, every spiritual uh, value system, every religion, everything purports to want to do. And, and we're, we're not, not every, but most, but most right? right? Yeah. To, to just simply good, good and be good, good to others. others. But, but again, astrology, astrology can be used in any way. way. You know, you, it, it can be used in any way. way. So, so I can't, can't speak to what will happen. happen. I can I only speak to what, what I'm doing with my expertise and my platform. platform. In, in the hopes, hopes that, that I can promote that for others, which I think is what you're doing with yours, right? With your expertise and your platform. Yeah, and I agree because I don't, I don't want to, like you said, it's not, it's not the job is not to indoctrinate anyone. It's not to force someone to agree with you. I really don't care if someone believes in Christianity or not. I have, a bunch, I have Muslim friends. I have Jewish friends. I have atheist friends. I really don't. That's not my provocative. I'm not that person. Right, right. My right, provocative right. is 
where do your you know where does your soul align where do you <laughs> what is your agenda and you mentioned something very important the lack of credentials that is in this field the lack of regulation and i think that plays into this conversation of what i'm having of of you know astrology in this current state not doing what you're doing with it yeah yes. in the mainstream <laughs> being used as a as a fraudulent system yes. yes pushing this misunderstanding of what it's really about you know how do we combat that how do yes. people around that how do people who are watching this that don't want to you know who are be who are victims in this who are paying yeah. Yeah. you know giving those 30 dollars for those readings because i'm going to be honest with you like i see women paying money for these readings i see them going to these these so-called um spiritual experts and it's like how did you vent this person that's the question how did you vet this person and this is where i come back to media literacy, literacy. Some, some of this is just media, media literacy, literacy. It's, it's there, there are, are countless um websites instagram, instagram posts whatever, whatever where, where whatever, whatever is whatever, whatever the quote is isn't attributed, attributed to an expert, expert. Anytime, anytime you read an article or an instagram quote and it's not attributed to an expert you know it was written by ai or by a team of copy editors period on, on any topic, topic but, but especially, especially astrology. astrology. Whenever, Whenever you see somebody who's like using generalizations that really ring true, but they're, but they're still generalizations, generalizations okay, you, you need to do more, more digging. digging. Maybe there there, those, those generalizations, generalizations ring true because, because you share sensibilities, sensibilities with a person because a broken, broken clock, clock is right twice a day, that, that kind of thing. thing. And, and maybe it's because they're using their social media platform to use to say general things. things. And, and in their, their private practice, practice they say more in-depth, in personalized things. things. Maybe. maybe. You've got to do your due diligence. And I think a lot of people are lazy. Again, Again we try to line jump with spirituality. You know, don't get me started on ayahuasca and all these other things that people do to try to jumpstart their spiritual development instead of do the work. Prayer, Prayer is, is a practice. A relationship, a relationship with spirit, with God, God with the universe, universe is a practice. Being, being a good person is, is a practice. Anyone, anyone who tells you it isn't does it is not being honest, honest, you know. And, and so, so, I think that that the work is is, is to find someone who's experienced, who has expertise, expertise right? right, and who, who can kind of show you what, what they're, they're about. about. And, and this is where it gets really complicated, you know, because. If, if you, you go, go to someone being like, like prove to me that you're right, right. prove to me that you're real, you know, you, know, you got, got your arms crossed across your chest, chest and you're like, prove to me that you're real, real. It, 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 you're setting someone up to fail. fail. And, and at the same, same time, <laughs> okay, can, can you, can, can you talk, talk for a few more minutes? Cause I have something to say, but I don't have to say it. I'll just say it and you tell me to wrap it up. Okay. If you like. Okay. Or do, or do we need to wrap up right now? Um, how, how long is it about to say? It's late, late at night, night for, for you. you. Oh, I know, I know, I know. Um, no, 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 no. Let's, let's just, well, we can just wrap, wrap it up. up. All to, okay, okay, I'll, I'll say this one very briefly. I'll say it very briefly. Most, Most of the people who turn to astrology and ask me for, ask me questions, questions or ask astrologers questions are asking the wrong question. question. Their, Their questions are too simple and they're looking for simple, finite answers. And that's not a fault of astrology. That's that's something else. And again, I think, I think the oversimplification of the relationship, of the relationship to God, God comes from traditional, traditional re religion. Wow! It just, it just gets brought over, over to astrology. astrology. That's, That's why I was like, like do you have time to have this conversation? Because so, so yes. yes, that was he. All right, even my even even the, even the, the <laughs> even my producer's like, wow, <laughs> because you literally, yes, I'm in full agreement with you. Like we we don't even have to go back and forth on this because yeah. I'm yeah. in full agreement that in religion. There has been a system of rewarding people. It's a mentality of rewarding, yes. like you said. You pray. You yes. Pray. yes. Um, just keep prayer. Worship. You'll be fine. That's actually one of the jokes we make in our skits. We're literally <laughs> like, hey, that's not what Christ said. Christ said faith is in action. You don't just pray yes. and have faith. You have to work. Work is an important concept in this world. Work gives you value. It gives you purpose. It gives you meaning when it's aligned with what you are supposed to do in the world. And yes. that is what's being completely neglected. It's a very cookie cutter. I'm a jump in front of the line type of mentality. I am shocked that you actually agree that it's being moved over into astrology. And you're I talk, I talk about, about it in public, public all the time. time. I, talk I talk about, about it in my readings all the time. time. I, talk I talk about, about it all, all the time. time. The, the oversimplification. So, so I'll tell, I'll tell you what, what as, as a practicing astrologer, astrologer, I would, I would say 40% of my job is helping people find the right question. 
maybe, maybe 50%, 50%. Percent. Sometimes, sometimes it's 80%. Percent. It's, it's helping people find, find the right question. question. But, but again, again I, I'm not a cookie cutter astrologer who just started doing this six months ago, ago right? right? You, you know, know, I've been doing, doing it for a minute. minute. But, but this, this is, again, again this, this comes from religion. religion. You, know, you know, five Hail Marys, bada bing, bada boom, you'll be fine, right? Just do what your husband says, bada bing, bada boom, it'll be fine. It, it, we, we need more complexity, complexity in, in our, our relationship, relationship to, to the unknown, to, to our, our own souls. souls. And, and that, that requires a lot, a lot of energy, energy that people are just driving paycheck, paycheck to paycheck, paycheck do not have. have. People who are just like trying, trying to survive do, do not have. have. You know, you're, you're 25, 25 years old right now. now. Your, your whole adult life has been with COVID. COVID. Like what? Like how do you even make sense of the world? And, you know, with the climate crisis and everything, how do, How do you make sense of it? A lot, a lot of people, people are like, I got no time. Just tell me, should I date him or not? <laughs> you know what I mean? And, and it's, it's just like, like it's, it's a misuse of spirituality. It's a misunderstanding of, of um, astrology and spirituality. spirituality. But, but there's context to it. We can understand where it comes from, from right? Yeah. And, and that can help us to reach people so that they can do better. So this is my last, last, last question. All right. We do have to set it before, but we got to go. Yeah. This is how we're going to wrap this up. Um. How do we deal with that mentality of always wanting something right away, wanting answers right away? Because personally to me, I know mm -hmm. I have a I have a theory as to why it happened. Just it's happening just because of my education in philosophy, especially in economics. I think it's because of capitalism. Yep. yep. And I yes, think yes. it's this mentality of capitalism moves so quickly. It is so demanding. It is a system of production and production needs to happen as quickly as possible. And it needs to be constantly happening it translates itself into social life and social life yes. becomes a production system and a production assembly line. And I don't see a reality where the system exists and you're still capable of being able to not want those quick answers. Cause I struggle every day with my faith because it yeah. is so contradictory to everything that is around me. And I can mm -hmm. only imagine how other people who are trying to do this with less knowledge and less understanding and not wanting to just quit. I can see no. the appeal to just go with the perspective, the, the perception of being one in faith, one in spirit versus actually mm -hmm. committing to it. Yep. I, I, I can't, can't disagree, disagree with you on a, on a damn, damn thing you said. said. I, I mean, honestly, honestly I, think I think it has everything to do with capitalism. capitalism. I, think I think it also has everything to do with nihilism. Which, which is, is not, not exclusive to capitalism, but related. And, and I, I think a lot of us are feeling really nihilistic, especially young people. You know, you know I was giving a reading to somebody on my podcast and, you know, he, he was, was like ready, ready to get out of a relationship. relationship and, you, you know, know, he was just, he was kind of done. done. And, and I was like, like you're a great guy. guy. You're going to find someone else to just break up. up. And he said, you don't know what it's like for people my age. He was 21. He's like, you don't know what it's like for people my age. I don't know if the world is going to exist. And, and if, if and if the apocalypse, apocalypse comes, if war comes, comes I, don't I don't want to be alone. alone. So he's, he's he was like, like, I don't know if I can get out of this relationship because I don't want to be alone when the worst happens. happens. And a lot of young people are dealing with this. And so this thing that is normal for youth to be impatient, um, the, the thing that is inherent to capitalism, which is like you said, act, you know, product, 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 never rest, always go, always grind. You, you add, add that to nihilistic, nihilistic conditions, conditions with the climate, with war, with genocide, with, I mean, you just open your phone, you see dying babies every day, all day, all day what? what? And, and that's, that's just two topics, topics right? When, when you add, add all these things together, together it does incline people, young, young people and older people, but especially young people, to, to look for simple answers, answers that make them feel better now, now that, that make them feel safer now, because they don't believe they are going to be better, that things will be safer. And who could tell them that they will be? I, I, I mean, I can't. I can't. We, don't we don't know, know what's coming, coming, but we know it's not better in the climate. We know it's not better in the short term with social is issues here. Capitalism, Capitalism is destroying this country, country the, world. the world. I mean, I mean we, we know, know this. this. And, and so there's not, there's, there's not a good answer because, because it's not a good situation. situation. And, and to me, this, this strengthens my faith. faith. This, this strengthens my dedication and commitment to, to doing, doing good in the world. world. Because I'm not going to fix the world. world. I'm not going to. I'm not going to heal, heal anybody. But, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to try. And, and by and by, I will make progress—not perfection, but progress. progress. And, and 
as, as I, I do that, that I will support, support people, people who will then go out and, and do their own good. good. And, and I will inspire people to try to, to do good, good as well. well. And, and on and on, on it goes. goes. This, this, this is, is the service of spirituality, spirituality in my view. And, and this is why religions congregate. You know, you know, they, they congregate, congregate because, because you're building community. community. And, the and the hope, hope is, is that you don't, don't exclusively interact with your community, with your community that you go out from the community of your religious congregation, congregation and, and then you let it multiply, multiply not by proselytizing, not by trying to bring people in, but by sharing your spiritual growth in acts of service and kindness and integrity. That's the damn move. And so this, this is, is where, where we fundamentally, fundamentally agree, agree, right? Like, this, this is, is where we fundamentally, fundamentally agree. We really fundamentally support. agree. Because Christ <laughs> yeah. was supposed to be the final savior in our religion. There is no other savior. You're not here to save a freaking <laughs> soul. You're not here to convert anyone. You're here yep. to yep. be a good person and to show people how to love as Christ did. Because action is what will show people what it means to be your faith, to be in faith with God. Yeah. So I'm in full agreement with you. Yeah. yeah. I'm so glad you have this mentality because there's so many people that don't. It, 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 it's, it's true. true. And, 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 I, and, I, and I agree. I'm really, really glad you have this mentality. mentality. You know, you know I, have I have been interviewed on other Christian podcasts. podcasts. I mentioned one to you at the start, start, but a, a bunch, bunch of them, them I've also um, done, done interviews with like podcasts, podcasts about cults because, because astrology, astrology can be, people, people can be cultish in the way they use it. And the reason why I like having these kinds of conversations is because I rarely have major disagreements. I mean, you know, we disagree on some details, trust. But the big picture, a lot, most, most of the times we don't. don't. And, and this, this is what happens when people really conversate. When, when, you know, like, not, not, I didn't come into this conversation with any preconceived notions. I don't feel like you did either. We have, of course, we live in the world. We have ideas. We have experiences. But having open-hearted conversation where there's actual intellectual discourse, but also an emotional adaptability to like, oh, this is who you are. Like, that to me is it's, it's a form, form of service. service. It's, it's a service, service to, to my soul, soul and myself. And, and it's a service to you to, to, to really listen to someone. someone. I mean, people, people don't listen to each other. To truly listen to someone is a service, which is why I said the next time you're talking to an astrology girly, listen to the emotional part, not the intellectual part. Because to me, that's what most people who don't really know anything about astrology but use it a lot, that's what they're getting at. It happens in faith too. I understand what you're saying. I believe, I believe that's it. What the cult people are like the cult people are being driven by emotion, 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 emotion. emotion. And, and that, that is powerful, powerful. And, and and it shouldn't, shouldn't be minimized, minimized whether or not that's what you're doing or I'm doing. doing. We, we should always honor that that's that's, that's, that's human. human. It's, it's always, always been human. human. It's, it's always, always gonna, gonna be human. human. Meeting people where we're at, where they're at, is an act of kindness, and it's one that not enough people practice. Yeah. yeah, I agree. Yeah. And I think that was yeah. a wonderful yeah. way to end this, Jessica. I thank I you so much for coming on. This was amazing. This is a great first episode. Yes. Yes. Some more, some more, some more. She killed it. She did great. That was amazing. Thank you so much. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. This has been so, so much fun. fun. We went longer than expected, but only because it was awesome. awesome. So, so I really appreciate it. It's been great talking to you. To you. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to say before we sign off? Anything you want to oh. Anything you want to sure. Sure. Get out? Uh, so, so if, if people are interested in hearing, hearing more from me, you can listen to my podcast. podcast. It's, it's called Ghost of a Podcast. podcast. It, comes it comes up twice weekly. Um, and I, you know, give readings. If you want to hear an astrology reading, you can, you can listen, listen to my, my midweek episodes, episodes or the horoscopes, horoscopes which are on Sundays. Um, and what else? I have an audiobook coming out uh, in November, the end of November. And it is a book of meditations based on sun signs, based on astrology. Um, um, and, and it'll, it'll be available at Audible, Audible exclusively, exclusively so, so people can listen to that if they like. Um, and I will just give a quick a contextualizer to the meditation book because I know this is a Christian show. Um, I, it's not like a way to proselytize astrology. It's it's meditations based on the energy of each of the zodiac signs. So again, it's educational as much as it is hopefully soothing um so those are a couple things people can check out i've got a really busy website with lots of stuff on it so if somebody's really interested they can visit me there at lovelingato.com that's perfect thank you so much we really do thank appreciate you it. um it's been a real treat <laughs> um again guys so check out jessica she's on instagram uh no longer on twitter uh you can yep. check out her podcast <laughs> um she also has a website if you ever want to get a reading from her uh, we want to thank you again for being the first episode. Uh, this was great. And um, we will be having other guests. I believe we have another guest relating um, 
to religion. And then next, I can't tell you guys what episode two is about. You will see in the rollout, but it's going to be great. Thank you so guys. Thank you guys so much for tuning in and we'll check you next time.